Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over a few example problems involving universal sets. This is a viewer requested video through Instagram. I get most of my viewer requests through the YouTube comments, but you're more than welcome to send me questions on social media. You can find links to my social media accounts down in the description. With that said, let's get right into our first problem. Let the universal set U be the set of odd positive integers. Let the set S be the set containing all elements X, such that X is an element of U, 3 divides X, and X squared is greater than 15. We are asked to write S in roster form. Writing S in roster form just means that we're going to write S by listing out its elements. If we were simply asked to write S any way we pleased, then technically we could just write it out in set builder form the way that it was given to us. But since we're being asked to write S in roster form, we're going to need to figure out exactly what the elements of S look like. To figure that out, we just need to look at these three conditions that define the elements of S and stack them on top of each other, so to speak. Let me show you what I mean. The first condition is that elements of S have to be elements of the universal set. In this case, the universal set is the set of odd positive integers. So this includes 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, and so on. Then we'll apply the second condition to this list of numbers. The second condition is that 3 must divide every element of S. That means that every element of S has to be a multiple of 3. So applying that condition to this list of numbers leaves us with 3, 9, 15, and 21. The last condition is that for every element of S, its square must be greater than 15. So now we'll apply that condition to this smaller list. I know that 3 squared is 9, so 3 does not fit this last condition. But 9 squared is 81, and 81 is greater than 15, so 9 definitely fits this condition. All of the other numbers in this list will also fit that condition because they're all greater than 9, so their squares are definitely greater than 15. So our list is reduced to 9, 15, 21, and so on. The ellipsis, these three dots here, indicates that a pattern continues. Do you see what the pattern is with these three numbers? The pattern is that to get from 9 to 15, we just have to add 6. To get from 15 to 21, we just have to add 6. And this pattern continues. So the ellipsis tells us that to get the next number in the list, we just have to add 6 to 21. And that would be 27. The reason that adding 6 works is that the numbers in this list have to be odd multiples of 3. If we add 3 to 27, we'll get a multiple of 3, but it's going to be an even multiple of 3, because 27 is odd. So by adding 6, we skip over all of the even multiples of 3, so that we just end up with the odd multiples of 3. And remember that we ditched the 3 at the start of the list, because 3 squared is not greater than 15, so it didn't fit the last condition. I want to point out that identifying the pattern in your list of numbers is important. Because remember, the ellipsis indicates that a pattern continues. So if there's no discernible pattern in your list, it doesn't make any sense to use the ellipsis. So if you're going to use an ellipsis to indicate that a pattern continues, you need to be sure that there is a pattern, and in general it should be a pretty obvious pattern. So with that said, we can write S in roster form like this. It's the set containing 9, 15, 21, 27, and so on, following this pattern of adding 6 each time. Just by the definition of S, this is the set of all odd positive integers that are multiples of 3 whose squares are greater than 15. But that's it, that is S in roster form. So remember, all we did was we looked at the set builder definition of S, and then one by one, we applied these conditions and sort of stacked them on top of each other. The first condition told us that all of our elements had to come from the universal set. And then, using the last two conditions, we were able to whittle that list down. Once you've properly applied all of the conditions, you're guaranteed to have elements of S. 
and since we were able to identify a pattern, it was as easy as writing that list in a set followed by an ellipsis. You won't always need to use an ellipsis when you're writing a set in roster form. If the set is small enough, then you can just list out all of the elements, but perhaps more often than not, you will need to use an ellipsis if you're writing a set in roster form. With that said, let's stop wasting time and get on to the next problem. Let u equal the set containing 1, 3, 6, 8, 9, and 10, and we're letting this be the universal set. Let a be the set containing 1, 6, and 3, b is the set containing 3, 6, and 9, and we are asked to write the absolute complement of a intersect b in roster form. So this is decently straightforward. All we have to do is find a intersect b, take the absolute complement of that, and then that's our answer. We just have to write it out by listing the elements. So let me just write our two sets here. A is the set containing 1, 6, and 3, and B is the set containing 3, 6, and 9. So remember, we're trying to find the absolute complement of A intersect B. We do what's in the parentheses first, that's A intersect B, so let's figure that out. What is A intersect B? Remember that the intersection of two sets is the set that contains all elements common to both sets. So A intersect B is only going to contain a particular element if that element is in both A and B. So let's figure this out. A has the element 1. B does not have 1. Since 1 isn't in A and B, it's not going to be in the intersection. Moving on, A has 6, and we see that B also has 6, so 6 is in the intersection. Then, A has 3, and so does B, so 3 will also be in the intersection. Then, the only element of B we haven't looked at is 9, and of course, 9 is not in the set A, so we are all done. A intersect B is the set containing 6 and 3, because those are the only two elements common to both sets. So then we just have to find the absolute complement of A intersect B. Well, remember what absolute complement is. The absolute complement of A intersect B is the set containing all elements of the universal set that are not in A intersect B. So if we look at A intersect B and see that it has 6 and 3, then look up at our universal set, we can cross off 6 and 3, the remaining elements are the absolute complement of A intersect B. So let's write that out. The absolute complement of A intersect B is the set containing 1, 8, 9, and 10. Again, these are the elements of the universal set that are not in A intersect B. So there we go, that is our answer. That's the absolute complement of A intersect B in roster form. All right, fantastic. Let's move on to our last problem. And this one's quick and painless, so let's get into it. We're going to let u be equal to the integers, and we're letting that be the universal set. Then we let big A be the set containing all elements A of u, such that 7 divides every element A, and every element A is congruent to 1 mod 10. And we are asked to write the relative complement of u with respect to A in roster form. I want to quickly point out that if you don't know what this means, A being congruent to 1 mod 10, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter at all for this example. Now remember what this notation means. This is the relative complement of u with respect to A. That is, the set of all elements in A that are not in u. Let me say that one more time. This is the set of all elements in A that are not in U. But by definition of A, every element of A has to be in U. Thus, there doesn't exist an element that's in A but not U, so this set is empty. So to write it out in roster form, we just open the set and then we close the set. And that's it. Again, this set is empty because by definition, every element in A has to also be in U. So there are no elements in A that are not in U. So this set is the empty set. And that's it for today. So I hope this video helped you understand the universal set and some related concepts a bit better. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Sorry. I'm
showing now Vital signs 